Hey, I'm JD and welcome to my channel. I heard some information from somebody who said, look, if you're going to do uh, mechanical videos, never show your face first or you're never going to get any hits. So it, I guess it depends on how good looking your face is to start off with. So, so here we go. Um, today we're going to be disassembling, uh, cleaning and reassembling and testing this uh, Timothy Eaton, Eaton uh, pocket watch. Let me just move this in a little bit closer so you can see what this thing looks like. There it is, see the E and the little diamond shape on the top there? That's a E for Eaton uh, pocket watch. So Timothy Eaton's pocket watch. And if you're curious what a Timothy Eaton pocket watch is, well, it came from the Eaton's, Timothy Eaton's uh, department store. And this department store uh, came to existence, I guess you could say, way back in the 1800s. So founded in 18... 69 in Toronto by Timothy Eaton and uh, he was an immigrant from North Ireland uh, and Eaton's grew to become uh, Canada's big retail store. Uh, I've bought things from Eaton's. Uh, it was Simpson Sears or Eaton's are the two stores you went to at Christmas time for your gift when you were a kid. So uh, plus the catalogs were good for if you ran out of toilet paper which was uh, excellent and I think there's a lot of jokes on that. Um, they, uh, they also had a store or a uh, a uh, mail company started in uh, in Winnipeg, uh, and the Winnipeg store was a, a huge business. It started in the 20th century, uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and it was a mail order warehouse. So you could basically order from the catalog, and then uh, and then the the stuff would be shipped to you from the mail order warehouse. So so that was not part of their plan, but it just blew up to be uh, incredibly popular. So Eaton's catalogs were what you got back in the day. And, um, and that's the story. So, so now the uh, the movement. If I just unscrew this watch here from the back and have a look at this, it's decorated. There's a there's somebody's name that's imprinted in the back, so likely given as a gift. Uh, what you would do, you'd get it engraved. Uh, the actual American Watch Company uh, Fortune case, AWC Fortune case. There it is. There, gold filled. Uh, it doesn't tell you how many carats, but uh, and no guarantee. Usually, you can get the guarantee on it, and there's and it tells you if it's a 25-year guarantee. You're usually looking at a 20-carat gold filled, and there's a bunch of little signatures on it, which means the owner of this watch uh, got it maintained a few times over the years. You can just look at those uh, watchmakers uh, catalog signatures, and if I look at this uh, movement, see if I can get a close-up of this movement. I'm going to turn off my light here so it's a bit better. So there's the movement, um, and you're looking at the top. It says T. Eaton Company Limited, the T. Eaton Company Limited. It says it is adjusted, so it's a higher quality watch. Um, it is 17 joules. I just rotate this a little bit, and you'll see that right on the right-hand side above the uh, gear there. It's 17 joules. And there's a serial number here, but I don't know how to look that serial number up for this specific watch. But it's not a very high serial number. It looks like it's, it might be 8189451. So it is, it's actually higher than I thought it was. It's a little worn out there. So it's just above the uh, ratchet wheel. Um, and in what I'm told when doing some of my research, um, it's got a jeweled center wheel as well, which is nice. Uh, what I'm told with doing some of my research is that these movements were typically Galley and Company movements, G-A-L-L-E-T. Um, and these are a Swiss manufacturer of high-end timepieces for professionals. So Galley is the uh, world's oldest watch and clockmaking house. It dates back to Humbertus Galley, a clockmaker who became a citizen of Geneva back in 1466, folks. 1466. That's not how old this, this watch is, though. So, and the company was officially registered uh, by uh, Julian Gallet in 1806. No, actually 1826. And then they moved their whole family to Show La Chaux de Fond, which is where Rolex is and all the other companies. Um, back in back in that day. So, so there. This is a switch a Swiss watch movement. So it's uh, probably fairly well made. Um, but it's a galley watch movement. There was some, some thought that there might be Omega or, or um, maybe even a Rolex watch movement, but it's not. It's a Swiss, and it's 
a galley movement. So, and if I look at this movement closely, and I just moved it like this, it looks like it's either overbanked or something. So I'm not sure what's wrong with the watch, but uh, we're going to break this watch down and uh, and have a look at it and uh, see what I can do to get it going again. On uh, first examination, I'm looking at the uh, crystal. It's a plastic crystal. You can tell by tapping a crystal, by the way, whether it's plastic or not. And the setting mechanisms work fine. I pull the stem out and, and it works fine. Uh, and everything else looks, seems to be intact. I might be able to clean this crystal, bu crystal up a bit. Not sure. Um, so I'm just going to just sort of loosely put the back on so I could get it supported. And I'm going to see if I can remove the, uh, the crystal here. So by just twisting on the bezel with my hand. If you can't get it out, then if you use a plastic ball, sometimes that works. Uh, but this thing seems to be pretty stuck in place. Um, and often if you're unscrewing a, a crystal like this, the threading gets screwed up over the years. So but let's get the crystal ball out. Or the crystal ball. <laughs> let's get the ball out and see if this works any better than my fingers. So here we go. Just a plastic ball you can get at the your local dollar store and you just put some pressure on the ball like that and then twist it like this like that and then the uh, the face comes off so much better grip with the ball by the way I've tried all kinds of other techniques I'm not sure where I picked that up but it's a brilliant technique of actually removing this uh, the crystal so snap this open like this um, and I want to set the hands to to 12 o'clock that way I can uh, pop the hands off and not worry too much too much about uh, I'm moving further away from my screen here not worry too much about scraping the um, the face of the watch uh, and my hand removers are, are pretty big I like these ones actually they're really nice uh, so I just grip underneath and as I said before I use the edge of the hand remover that's something I saw Mark do on one of his videos and I thought that is friggin brilliant uh, because the center of it's just way too wide to to remove that properly, right? So, so I just remove that and then grab the hands and put them in where the face is, um, and just rest them on the glass. Be very careful with this and pick it up. And I just dump the hands in here, and that keeps them out of the way. So, and it's same with the, uh, the little tiny the minute hand. You can throw that plastic on there, and I've got smaller hand removers that are better for the minute for the second hand. I said minute hand, but it's too early in the morning to be talking. So, but I am. I decided to, to start really early and make a video. I think I'm crazy to do that. So I'm just relaxing. Got to work tomorrow, so this is just relaxation for me, I think. That's what I want to call it. Relaxation. Uh, and let me see. It's funny, I get a lot of comments on my videos and I actually like the comments, so keep them coming, as they say. Um, and I respond to them, always respond to my comments, and usually within a day. A gentleman wrote me, who's a Canadian, and he wrote me a long, a very long uh, message. And I was like, okay, this is a big one. Uh, I haven't responded to him yet because I want to give him a good response. So, And in this watch here, you see some tabs. So I'm going to get my camera a little bit closer. Alrighty. It's funny when I say, I'm back to you, it's like one millisecond. To me, it's like I just spent two minutes trying to realign my camera. Um, what do we want to call this? We want to call this a squirrel moment. So I put this video up the other day, and it turns out that these things are pretty rare and pretty valuable. And now I've got to figure out how to make little grooves in here for this stud remover, or the stud holder, actually, for hairspring studs. Um, and I will do that with a very small file a little later on. But, uh, we'll, we'll deal with that later. I'm going to do a little bit more research on that. That was a squirrel moment for you. Just to keep things interesting. So here I can just I can leave this on the mat because it's pretty good here. And I don't think I need to get my very famous and spongy version of remover here. But I want to remove these uh, screws here and try to get the appropriate screwdriver for that. So I can pull this out. That's pulled out already, actually, because I did that for the hands. And I just need to unscrew this. So the screw up top is just resting against the case. So no problem there at all. And, and the screw over here is a flat screw. It's a different screw altogether. 
and it is it's got one of those little tabs that help hold it in place so likely a jeweler did that it's not likely something that would come with the watch uh, they usually have the screws that fit the watches but if a jeweler was doing any maintenance on this watch then this little tab would be part of that so it's uh it's gonna unscrew this it's, just, it's gonna give me some fun taking it out I can tell already come on there we go so that's it there that's kind of a little you can see that it's a little tab that's on the end of the screw and that's just used to uh, hold the watch in place so I just have to remember for that tab um, where it came from I'm just gonna back this watch out like this and there's the case and nothing special about this case it's a little oiled up I may throw this thing into an ultrasonic cleaner actually to get this thing nice and clean see what it does just throw the complete case into my ultrasonic cleaner and there's the movement here and there's um, is there a dust ring no there's no dust ring on this so I don't think the dust rings I don't remember seeing a lot of dust rings on Swiss made movements so but it's pretty dirty plenty of dirt here um, and as I look down on it I can see the uh, where the screws are for the uh, face so, so if I can very carefully take these and remove those which will loosen the face up and there's only two which is nice so no problem just get rid of the face here uh, usually actually I take off the uh, so unscrew does it this one a little bit too much usually I take the balance out first but I'm being, being a bad boy today screw that a little more and then I should be able to wedge my screwdriver in here to loosen this up and pull the face off. Face off. And let me see if I can do that. There we go. This thing hasn't been off probably since the 30s. Uh, this watch was likely made in the 30s by this Galley watch company, and then provided but to Eaton's watch company for for their jewelry store. And, uh, and then they uh, basically would sell this to uh, somebody and have it. Have probably have the uh, the writing in the back of the case like I showed you so that's pretty in pretty good shape there and there's a little bit of marking there I might be able to touch that up actually with some uh, white very nice white uh, model paint that I have that works really good it's enamel paint actually so I think I'll enamel paint this too to make it look nice and let me just remove everything that's going to cause me problems here so there's the hour wheel going out and of course, as I look down on this, holy cropoli, this is like quite the setup that they've got here. Um, every time I work on a watch, I think, okay, what the heck is going to go on here? They've got a cap jewel here, which is nice. Um, and then it's quite the setup for winding. So i got to take a number of photos of this before I take that apart. As you can see that, I'll just move this up a little closer. That is nasty looking. That's probably the hardest part about doing this watch work is is removing the, uh, the these settings so and in this case here um, I want to get rid of the uh, want to remove the balance cock here and just put it put it aside so and it's funny I'm kind of holding this watch in the in midair which I don't normally do but I'll rest this rest this along my uh, balance balance cock holder and, and just unscrew this save some time but I do need to get my movement holder out in a second, but I'll do that after I've gotten rid of this. So I put this in my little tiny tray here, see that? So I made this tray out of a big chunk of brass, and I glued it onto this base here, and that just lets me um, make sure that the watch and the stuff are all together, right? So the balance cock here has got a little bit of a groove here, but before we look at that, let's look at the uh, setting timing mechanism. That's pretty cool, actually. It's a little circle here, and you just push the circle left and right, and that moves the uh, regulator pins here, here along the hairspring. So, and uh, so this should be interesting. So I put my finger on the top here just in case this thing decides to take a jump. Um, that just usually I use a toothpick when it's on a watch stand, but for now I'll just do it this way. Now if this doesn't come straight out and rest nicely quickly, I'm going to use two pairs of tweezers to do this. No, it worked. So there we go. So now I just rest this down here like that. And it just sits down like that. And then it's 
it takes all of the pressure off the hairspring. So there we go there. You see how that's just sitting down there? And I can clean that up and get the jewel all done later on. And we're good as gold, baby. Good as gold. And now I need to strip this thing down. And I think what I'm going to do is take everything out first. And then i, I got to take a picture of this movement, though, or I'll be in trouble. All right, just for the sake of saving my life here, I'm going to take out this cannon pinion so I don't bend, bend anything. See if I can take this directly up. Yes, no, maybe. No, this is going to get stuck. This is going to be a little bit of a haul. There's the seconds hand, so I want to make sure I keep myself away from that. So let's get out the uh, Myers number 58 movement holder, which I just love. This thing is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So there we go. Um, now I can start just by removing some of these wheels here. That's the uh, that's the way I like to go about doing this. So I just take this these wheels off nice and easy. Now sometimes this one here uh, goes in the opposite direction. I think it depends on what side it's on from the from the uh, crown wheel, right? So and I don't know with this watch whether it's going to go in the opposite direction or not. Yeah, it is. See that? You loosen it right. So I found that if the thing, if the wheel is on the left of the winding, where the winding stem goes in, just slightly left, this goes clockwise to loosen it. So it's not righty-tighty, it's righty-untidy. So, But you got to be very careful in doing that screw because you can absolutely wreck it. Um, it doesn't take much to actually um, strip the, the head of that screw and then you got yourself a you're in your screw hunting business and there's the uh, this here it uh, looks like I'm not sure if this has a center core in it but I'll check that out later and then this one here it should be left to, to loosen lefty loosen this is a uh, Swiss pocket watch Swiss pocket watch from Gallette, G-A-L-L-E-T. It was almost Gallant, which would have been cool. Seeing that uh, Gallants, they're all from PEI. And I've heard them called Gallant, which is probably not appropriate, but Gallant. See? Now, what I didn't do there, which I should have done, is let down the uh, pressure on the mainspring. So I forgot to do that, which is bad. should have just put my bench key in there and then put the click spring and let the pressure down, but I didn't know there was any pressure on that mainspring. So I found out hopefully there's no damage at all. It shouldn't be, um, but you never know. So, but I should have done that. It was kind of stupid of me just to do that and not take off the pressure of the mainspring. So anyway, live and learn. Sometimes you do stuff that's stupid, but this thing may need another mainspring anyway. What I like to do is test the watch after and see if it's the existing mainspring is giving it enough power where I don't have to replace it because uh, they used to say back in the day when a watch came in they replace the mainspring right well I don't have like 50,000 mainspring barrels so if, if I need to replace a mainspring I've got to order it from Cousins UK usually um, and no guarantee that the thing's going to come on time see there's two screws here one two the third one is missing see there's a third screw was missing it's the one right next to the uh, case screw here so this will require another screw and uh, so I got screwed on the screw size side if you could say that right so there we go take that out and put it aside I'm gonna take another picture of this just so I don't screw myself now again I want to make sure I understand how this how the uh, the works here work so if I turn it like this you see that uh, crown wheel not moving and then I turn it like this and then it moves. There we go. So I got the two, uh, two movements there. And then on this side here you'd see the full mechanism moving when I do that. So I'm going to do this and see if this works without things falling out. There we go. And then I can see how that actually this mechanism works. That might come in handy later on when I put all this back together again. And there we go. And this would be setting the time. And then when it's in the watch and you push the crown down, you're pushing it like that. And that's winding it. 
right, which would wind the, uh, the, the crown wheel and wind the watch. So this would turn and wind the watch, but this would be the, 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 um, the wheels on the top that would, that would turn, right? The wheels on the bus go round and round. Round and round. So that's that, and uh, that's a bench key that I used there. And so I'm going to remove these thingamajabi doohickey plates. So I'll have a look at the, uh, after I clean this watch. Oh my god, this thing is in very tight. It's in so tight that my screwdriver is not turning. I think this is uh, not good. So this one came out no problem. The other one is super tight. I don't want to make sure I strip the screw or anything, right? So I often get them that they're tight like that. I'm going to take try to this one again before I lean into the other one. So I got my purple turner here. So that should be good enough. Um, just going to make sure that this is tight in here. And that way I'm just not fighting it. All right, time to lean into it again. I press down pretty hard when I do this because I don't want to strip the head. Come on. Holy crap. Holy crap. This thing is super tight. Let me tighten this up again here. I may have to throw this into the cleaner first and then Try to. I'm going to use two hands here to see if I can move it. Oh, there we go. So I used two hands to to turn this screw. Now the the danger there was stripping the head. Uh, then I would have to get my screw removal tools out and see if I could solve the problem. But I got it out. So that was super duper tight, folks. Super duper tight. So so tight. It was like a uh, accountant's wallet. That's how tight it was. I just made that one up on the spot. On the spot humor. And this was easy actually, no problem. And again, I'm grouping the screws here, just in case I need to. And there's a little tab here that you can use to uh, lift this up. Tab, tab, and then right on the edge here, there's another little tab right there. So, so these Swiss guys thought of everything. Now, it looks like the uh, the center wheel wants to come out with this, but I probably should have removed the cannon pinion first. I'm like a useless today. I don't know why, but I am. So yeah, I should have removed the cannon pinion first. Let me just continue here on my struggle. Take the wheels out. That wheel is actually stuck in the jewel hole. Stuck in the jewel hole, and you should remove them in the right order, but you don't necessarily have to. They can come out this way usually. I might need to flip this thing around. I'll just slide that out and out of the way. I'll check the pivots later on, and I can usually get the uh, set the barrel for the the uh, mainspring out of the way, no problem. And now I've got to remove the pallet fork, um, and it looks like it's. I can see how that's put together. Um, and let's get the screwdriver in here to see if this works. See if this works. Again, I have to put some pressure on this thing because it's a thousand years old. This watch really needed cleaning. And there's the pallet fork, and now I need my C1A1 toothpick. I just hit my camera. I just watched a Bun special video, which was funny as hell. So Bun was trying to, uh, he was trying to, to ream a, the opening, the pipe of a second hand. And it's happened to me before in the, where the, where you, you put it in that tool that's supposed to, oh, that's magnetic. So we got to get our demagnetizer out and demagnetize the screwdriver because that'll be a pain in the butt later on. Uh, anyway, he was trying to, trying to, to uh, take that out and and it was like and he was trying to ream it and it just kept slipping and eventually the pipe came out the top and he was so pissed off and that's happened to me before so the technique I now use which I told him about was I actually hold it in my hand like that 
like this and then put the, the reamer through and I hold the second hand in my hand very lightly and then I can turn the reamer and I determine how much pressure I need on my fingertips. And I find that the it doesn't uh, the reamer won't then uh, won't then uh, cause the the whole thing to rotate in place and cause other problems. So so there you go. So there's the uh, cannon pinion. Um, let me look up. I got to look closely here and see how this is set. All right, you kind of can see it there. I should be able to use my cannon pinion remover and just pull that straight up. Now, if you've watched all my videos, you've seen I use this cannon pinion remover. It sometimes works really well, and then other times I don't. It doesn't work so well. So it looks like it'll fit nicely on this one, though. And it worked. There's the cannon pinion. It just grabs that little thing and pulls it up, which is so nice. This is a great tool. Go find one on, on eBay or something, but it's a great tool. This is a vintage one, as you can tell, by the handle and stuff. So, But it works so well to just grab that cannon pin and pull it up. Somebody probably got really sick of grabbing cannon pinions by their tweezers and said, I needs to make me a tool. I gots to make me a tool, which is really good English. Um, now that wheel should come straight up. I'm just going to grab it with my fingers because it's probably the better way of doing it. And now that's stripped, which is nice. And now, being the brave guy here, it's going to take me like a year to put this back together again, by the way. But I'm going to now attack this, this part of the movement here, which is like, oh my god, this doesn't look easy. I may need some light on this, so let's just turn the light up here. And see if I can unscrew all this crap. Which is like, holy crap. I'm going to lean into it too and see if I got elbow space. So I got, let me see, what do I got here? I've got this here, this here, this here. So this here could come out, but this spring would have to be undone first to allow this to come out. And then there's a spring here. Uh, actually, it's a lever here. And this lever is pressing against this here. And there's a spring in the middle that's pressing against this lever. And then this is a uh, wheel that transfers over to here. So I think the first thing I'll do is remove remove this on the top that's holding the second hand out. So I'll just reposition my camera again so you guys can get even closer to see if that helps at all. All right, I've gone for the angled camera here. It's a, and hopefully the angled camera does the job. But I'm going to start off. Yeah, this screwdriver is in good shape. I, I actually think it should probably be a bigger or smaller blade working on this. Now i got to make sure the screws are matched up to the uh, parts. I've got one more thread to go here. I need a smaller screwdriver. There we go. There's the screw. And here's the part. Like that. And I always check the bevel on the inside of that hole. <clears throat> Even though I kind of know which direction it goes, there's a little bevel or whatever you want to call it, an indent or something that holds it. Because the screw knows where it needs to be. So, And then I can take up the seconds wheel here. And I'll put that over with the other wheels, so I'm not too concerned about that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just make sure my screws are matched up here. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, COVID. And now I think I'll take this screw out. Because it's kind of just sitting there. That's a big screw holding down the small plate. And then I, what I do is I put pressure on it and see if it moves. And <clears throat> so I just put pressure downward so it doesn't slip at all and you don't end up ruining the part. And then as I put pressure on it, uh, so what I want to check here is, is this beveled at all? And it is. So if you look at that really closely, you can see a slight bevel. And that bevel goes down like this because it's because it's touching this wheel here, right? And this wheel 
um, it accepts this with the bevel. So if you don't have the bevel, it's going to make a lot of noise. So, so you got to make sure the bevel is down on that um, as you uh, as you reassemble this. So next, the logical thing to take off next, I think, would be this spring here. Well, this is all touching. Everything is touching everything here, which is amazing. This would be fun to put back together. I know it. So if I remove these screws here. There's two screws here, and it should be exactly the same, which would be nice. And uh, this should take pressure off that spring. I'm just putting these screws aside here. Uh, trying to make sure my plate here has got some support. Yeah, there we go. I'll just screw that in a little tighter here. There we go. All right, now I take out the second screw here, and realign my video camera. I'm just trying to make sure that the screwdriver head is flat. I'm just going to take this out with the screw and put that down over here. So that's that. The spring is out. And kind of just have to reverse the order, I guess, when you're uh, putting this back together again, right? So this thing moves like that, which means the spring here would come out. That was actually pretty loose. Loosey goosey. And I want to put all this aside. I'll show you a picture of where everything kind of goes after the fact. And I'm going to leave this in place because I'm worried about removing this spring. But the rest of it can come out. So I'll take out this too. I'm right over the top of this. and My light and my camera are right over the top as well. Probably the not, not the greatest working condition because of the... Uh, the lighting is pretty good, i got to admit. But but I'm right over the top of this, so, so that's not bad there. I'm going to clean this up later on. The uh, throw that in the wash machine, as they say, later on, and there should be nothing holding this in right now. This should just come right out. Let me see. That just comes right out. Let's put this back here. And I'm going to get a very small screwdriver and see if this lifts out. Actually, you know what? This comes, it would come out like this. Like this. And then these wheels and stuff would fall out in the middle. Just like they did. And the setting mechanism it would fall out the middle, and then this wheel here should come out right out the top, like that. There we go. So the watch is fundamentally stripped. Let me see. Make sure there's nothing loose there. Yeah, you see that oil there? We'll just see if my cleaning machine gets rid of that. I'm not going to touch it. I just want to see how good the cleaning machine is to clean this up. So there we go. And if I were to back up here, uh, you'll see the whole full picture. All right, there is a full picture of the watch disassembled with all these crazy springs and gears and everything else. Um, now what I need to do then is take the, uh, the cap off. I'm going to put this somewhere where it's not going to get damaged. So I'm moving it way over out of my reach. Oh, watch check. But again, I'm wearing the very beautiful... Uh, very, very beautiful San Martin uh, watch. Looks a bit like a Tudor. Uh, this is normally a $4,000 watch, but the San Martin sells this thing at an exceptional deal. And it's got a very nice uh, PT5000 movement in it, I think. But it's a 28.8 uh, speed movement, which is a highly accurate, a beautiful watch with a beautiful... I get a shot to show you here. I'm just so excited about this. So there's the watch there. It's a gorgeous watch. It's got a ceramic bezel. It's got I got some dirt on it right now, but it's got a ceramic bezel. Um, clean this up a bit. 
There we go. Ceramic bezel. Uh, it's got a... Oh, look at that. Is that a mark? No, it's just a smudge on the crystal. So uh, It's all stain stainless steel. Sapphire crystal. It's got like a Rolex uh, screw in, screw back in there. It's got solid end, solid end links. And these little jobby doohickeys for the uh, for each one of the links is is screwed in so there's a screw on one side to unscrew that if you can see that right there there's screws to unscrew this on both sides so they're studded basically and it gives me plenty of plenty of uh, work uh, opportunity to size it and then if you look at the inside here I mean this is a machined totally machined uh, strap and when you you press this here these buttons here to make this thing go in and I do this like this and then you just press down on it just so smooth it comes in very nice uh, it's heavy uh, and I did I believe I did a video on this watch but uh, this is my watch I'm wearing today so I just love this watch I don't know why but uh, it's good for 200 meters they say and I kind of believe it it's got a screw down crown that not that the screw down crown means it's uh, 200 meters it's just like a dive watch would typically have a screw down crown in it so so I'm going to have a look at the cap here and see if there's a, what this looks like. And this barrel probably hasn't been off for a while. Look at the gum. <laughs> oh my god. So let's just have a look at what that looks like here. Look at the gum on that bar the mainspring. Uh, I hope that's water. No, I don't think it's water. I think somebody just friggin' dumped this thing in oil. Uh, it's pretty sad looking though. But... Looks like it's there and all in place. Uh, again, this, this mainspring is not nicely wrapped around, which is going to be a pain in the ass to put together. Um, but look at that crap. Holy jeez. So I don't even want to put this down on my mat because it's going to dirty up the mat. Where do I put this? I'll just put this over here for now. And there's the arbor in the center. No big deal. I'll just put the arbor over here too. And we'll just see how well it cleans that up. Uh, in the cleaning machine, but I gotta walk this this gummy mess out and then go wash my hands. So that's that there. Just gonna go around in a bit of a circle here to see if I can walk this out a bit. Am I going the wrong way? I think I'm going the wrong way. So plus I'm not in camera. So let me just walk that out a bit like that. Get to the point where this thing is gonna. I'll be able to get my fingernail under there and then just lift that up. The guitar fingernails are pretty handy for watchmaking, by the way. So if you're a guitar player, then you should probably be a watchmaker as well. But I cut my thumbnails down, and now I can't get them in there for watchmaking because thumb, the thumbnails were freaking handy, but they look disgusting because I don't watchmake during the week. I do this on the weekends. So there we go. And the end piece... It's just got one of those little grabby things that, uh, there's the end piece. It folds over and it's welded. And so this shouldn't be too bad. So there it is there, and there's the greasy barrel from hell. I don't even want to put the mainspring down on my mat. But look at the crap in this barrel. I'm not sure how this <laughs> actually worked with that much oil in it. So I'm going to feed this into the... Uh, feed this into my washing my wash machine here and uh, I'm gonna make two videos this time because I'm not speeding this one up because I'm chatting away so I might as well do it well but I'm going to uh, make one video of disassembly and then I'm gonna clean this bugger and then we'll see what we do from there on in right let me just move this over a bit and chatty McChatty pants that's what my buddy calls me he calls me whiny McWhiny pants because when I golf if I have a crappy shot, I whine about it. I think, not, not every shot, but a lot of shots, I got to tell you. So I, I, I agree with him that I do whine a lot. But that whining kind of makes me, I'm just frustrated with my shot. And so I'm just whining about my frustration, which should be okay, right? I'm hoping. I can throw that in there and... This is a smaller watch, so I shouldn't have the same problem I've had with other watches trying to clean them in the cleaning machine and not having enough room in the, in the lower basket to do all of this plus the mainspring. Because I can just put that mainspring in just like that. And it goes nicely around. I guess perfect, man. That is absolutely perfect. 
And now this basket here is the one that goes on top of this one here. So, so put that one in. That's phase one, phase one. And my watch, my cleaning machine is in my basement, my basamante, as they say in Italian. And so, um, uh, I want to. Uh, I got to sit down there, and it's cold and stuff like that in the basement. So my wife keeps telling me to put my slippers on. When you're in the basement, put your damn slippers on and your socks. Make sure you have your socks on. I'm a typical guy who never has anything on that he needs to have on. So, so I can throw the stem in here and throw some of the stem parts in here. What I do like to do here when I put parts in a little basket is I put parts in that I know that don't interfere with each other. So if I put the stem in like this and I put in, say, this part here, um, this part here, right, with its screw, then I know the screw is for that particular part. Then I don't want to put anything else in here that would actually have a screw because then I'm going to confuse the issue. So, but if I put in, say, these parts in here, right, then they don't have a screw, then I have no problem, right? If I put two screws in there, and then, or two parts with two screws, and I'm like, okay, which screw goes with which part? And and then it's a trial and error thing when you're reassembling the watch, and you don't want to be in that situation. So, so in this case here, I got lots of screws and lots of parts, which is not good, but I can put this wheel in here with this screw, right, and I can put in also the cannon the uh, cannon pinion, because I know that that's not part of it, right? And I can probably put in these two big screws for the plate, right? And remember, this is the one that was missing a screw. So I can put those in uh, without, a, without an issue, but I can't put in this over, over here for the pallet fork, because I'll, I'll forget it and I'll get the screws mixed up. So, so I make sure I don't have a system where I have the screws in the wrong place. So there we go. So that's those parts there. Now, ooh, now I'm going to see whether I can put more parts in here and not worry about it. So let's put in this part here. And that's the, and the two screws for the uh, pallet fork bridge. And now I know that I can put in, because it's so much bigger, I can put this in here, which is uh, the rat, the, uh, ratchet for the mainspring uh, but I don't want to put the other one in because it's got a screw so do that and put that in there uh, and then and then now I gotta decide whether I put these in these can't go in here so I may have to put these in here which is okay um, but I got two screws in there so if I put this in with the two screws like that right is this this is a totally different screw uh, and so is this one here so this one is a totally different screw so I know it's different than those screws so I can put these parts in together and I absolutely know that this is a totally different screw for this that's a left hand threaded screw and it's a bigger one altogether so I can throw this one in here and I think I'm not gonna have a problem remembering where everything goes with that so that's pretty good. This one here though, I don't know. I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with this one here. I don't want to put it in here because that screw is almost the same size as the other ones. So, but I do have another basket, but that basket probably won't fit inside here. But I can put dead center in, in this one here. I can put this little tiny screw. It won't go through the mesh. So I, I'm okay there with this part. Right. Now these have a sm smaller mesh, which is nicer, but I don't believe that screw will go away. So I do have a, ma a massive collection of screws, by the way. Um, so if I, for some reason, uh, this I have an issue, uh, then I won't be screwed, as they say. <laughs> and I make sure the seconds, the seconds wheel there, or whatever you want to call it, the fourth wheel that the pivot is facing upward. I'm not sure if that actually matters, but I do I do do that. I said do-do. And I'll throw these screws in here. 
one, two, three, and there. This one looks like it's a different size than the rest of them. So when I put this together, I'm going to be aware of that. I clean the pallet fork by hand because I don't want these jewels to be affected. There's the pallet fork. And look at that nice pallet fork. There we go. I need to get my hairy hand away or something. There we go. That's the pallet fork. Man, the camera makes your hands look so old. So that's that. And so now I just... I always have one basket I can't put in, but I bought these baskets from uh, Cousins UK. They're really good, high-quality baskets. Um, and now I drop this whole th unit down. And when I drop it down, I make sure that it's nice and tight with the bottom unit, nice and snug. And same here. So when I put this unit on top here, um, I want to make sure that that's nice and tight with the bottom unit. So I grab that in the center and then put it down like that. And I just rotate it and check all the seams to make sure there's no there's no uh, gaps because it pushes in and it causes it creates a roof for the previous basket uh, and then put this on top like that and I just put this little basket aside I don't need it now this whole unit is ready to go into the pearl watch cleaning machine for a complete scrub down and uh, we'll catch you in the next video so thanks for watching my video I'm not showing you my face anymore because someone said your face probably causes you to get less hits. <laughs> so, we'll see.